Hello, I'm Jana, and welcome back to The Crafty Corner. Today, we're going to have some fun with art journaling. I came across these extremely fun prompts created by Kia Creates, and I just had to try my hand at a few prompts. So today, we're going to be looking at the prompt Poison Garden. And of course, we're going to be pulling out all things Tim Holtz. So we're going to be using a combination of distress sprays and a whole bunch of ideology products. All right. Let's head over to the crafty corner. Today we're going to be doing some art journaling. So I had started this art journal and I have been working on a fun little Halloween journal challenge. This challenge was created by Kira Creates and there are so many good prompts, but I knew I just had to do at least one mixed media themed video for one of the themes. And I decided that I'm going to be working on the theme of poison garden. So since we're all, all about things Tim Holtz and distress and vintage, we're going to be creating in a Tim Holtz style with lots of ideology and fun ranger products. All right, let's go ahead and open to page 13. Here we go. Nice blank surface to work on. And the journal that I'm working in is a Dina Wakely mixed media journal. I love how thick the pages are, and this is just the right type of paper to do some collage in. Okay, so we're going to start with the background. For the background, we are going to be spritzing with some water, and then we'll be adding a bit of Distress Mica Spray Stain. Also, I'm just going to tuck some scrap paper in at the edges so that I don't get any color bleed onto my other pages. So I'll just quickly do that. There we go. All right, so for colors, I'm going to be using some tree lot and specimen for my first layer, and then we're going to be doing a little bit of frozen fog. So just kind of working around the edges first with some specimen. Good. And now let's go into some tree lot. Okay. It looks like a hot mess right now, but that's okay. We're going to go in and do some blending with some water and the Ranger Heat Tool. So let's go ahead and speed this up. All right, let's take a look at that background. Mm. So we've got some beautiful dark greens going on. We've got some of that beautiful frozen fog. And there we go. So that is a good start for the background. Now we're going to be doing a little bit of collaging. I have some collage paper, and this is from an older ideology skew from a Tim Holtz ideology Halloween release. And I wanted to snip this part of a gate. It looks really cool and that's going to kind of look like a garden gate. So we're going to take that and we're going to glue that right into the book. So we've got some collage medium and we're just going to glue that down. Okay, so just scribbling the collage medium directly on here and I will smudge that out with my fingers. All right, that should be enough glue. Good. So just smudging that out. Okay. And it looks like I should have some glue left over to go over the top. All right. So we're just going to take this. We're going to carefully line that up right with the edge of the journal. And I'm going to just press that right into the seam. Okay. Pretty good. And we'll just take that little bit of extra glue and spread that right over the top. Good. We've got kind of a definitive edge right now, but that is going to blend in when we do some more layering with more ideology pieces. Okay, so I'm just smoothing that out here. Looks like I need a little bit more glue on this side. Good. All right. Hmm, that's blending in quite nicely. Definitely happy with that. Okay. Whoops, got a little bit of tear, but that's okay. 
just gonna poke that back down good all right I am pretty happy with this so for the next layer we're going to be going in with a stencil a stencil that we're going to be going in with is an older one let's see here this is THS 149 and I think this might have been gothic script it's pretty cool either way so what I am going to do is I'm going to kind of mask off part of the journal I'm just going to use some of my scrap paper and we're going to give that a good tear so that we have a bit of a jagged line there just like that so I'm going to take this I'm take that and now I'm going to spritz with a bit of dis Distress Spray Stain Picket Fence. So I'm hoping this is going to come through nice and ghostly. And of course we're giving this a good shake. Alright, let's see what this does. Okay, so we'll go ahead and lift that off and I'll wipe off that stencil because we're going to do the same thing for the other side. Okay, there we go. Just gonna tuck that back and lift. Ooh, very cool. I like that it bled and that's actually giving us a really nifty effect. So very quickly, I'm just going to wipe this off. Okay, so let's pull this side down and we're going to put the stencil on. And again, I'm going to use this to mask off part of the stencil. Okay, that should be good. And let's go ahead and spritz. That should be pretty good. Let's lift. And we'll take the stencil off. There we go. Splotchy, but good. Definitely happy with the way that is looking. So we're just going to give this a quick dry with the Ranger Heat Tool, and then we will proceed to our next layer. Next, we're going to be adding a layer of some Distress Texture Paste Black Opaque. And what better stencil to use than the Vines and Roses? This is going to look really good. So we're going to just take that stencil and we're going to kind of do a little bit of an arch going all the way around the page. So. What we're going to need, we'll need a palette knife, and then we can just spread this right onto the page. Now, different texture pastes have different viscosities, and of course, this means that they're all going to have different drying times. Now, the black texture paste, which is gorgeous, has the consistency of approximately frosting. And I have found that this takes on average 20 to 30 minutes to dry. 40 to be safe if you are in a humid environment. And since we are in lower Canada, some days it is very rainy and yes, the humidity is high. So we like to give this some decent time to dry. All right, so we're just going to line this up and let's start smushing that texture paste through. So the main thing with the texture paste is that we don't want to be too heavy handy, but we want to be thorough enough that we're not going to miss any of the fantastic detail of the stencil. So as long as we can see the stencil, we are doing fine. Okay, let's see, maybe a little bit more right there. Good. Mm. I do love the detail of the stencil. Okay. So I'm pretty happy with that. We're just going to scrape the extra bit back into the jar. We'll lift the stencil and then we'll plop it right on the other side of our spread. Okay, and lifting. Oh, I just, I love the detail of this. It is just too good. And that black texture paste, mm, absolutely delicious. I don't know why, but now I really, really want chocolate cake. This is making me think of like a 
deep, really, really dark, dark chocolate frosting. Okay, moving on to the other side and trying to forget about all things dessert-like. Let's line up our stencil. Okay, that's good. And we'll take another scoop of this beautiful black texture paste. Okay, and let's put that on. So again, I'm just using the edge and scraping, making sure that we've got good coverage and we're not putting it on too thickly. All right, and we'll just scrape off the extra bits and back into the jar. Okay, I've got a little bit more that can be scraped off. There, I think I'm pretty happy with that. Mm, so much detail on this and that black is just going to pop with our background. Okay, so we've got the extra back in the jar, putting our press and seal back over the top, very important so that our texture paste does not dry out. And then of course, sticking the lid back on. All right, let's lift and see what we've got. Hmm, gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so I'm going to let this dry for about 30 to 40 minutes and we will be back to add more detail to our poison garden spread. Right, our texture paste is now all dry. Time to start a bit of collaging. So since we're doing a poison garden, I have pulled a whole bunch of different ideology floral images. So let's just bring that mess right in and we're gonna pick through it and decide which things we want to incorporate. I'm probably gonna do kind of a rough spread and then we can make some decisions on where things are going to go. And we're definitely going to be doing a bunch of layering up. We've got some really bright floral pieces that are too bright for the aesthetic that we're going for. But if we do a little bit of a paint wash with some distress paint, then these would blend in beautifully to the background. So I think I'm gonna pull those really bright ones first. That's gonna be the first layer that we're going to work with. And then we will use the other pieces as the next layer. All right, so we'll set these off to the side for the moment. And most of these are from this year's Tim Holtz Ideology layers and Halloween ideology sets. And we also have some from the spring. So these, they're cool, but immediately I want to tear these because if we tear them, it's going to give us a little bit more contrast and texture. So let's see, kind of just, I don't want to hide too much of that really good texture paste. So I'm going to try to be strategic with the way I place these. Okay, let's see. This one, definitely a good one. But again, just want to tear that up. Okay. That's pretty good. Oh, that will look nice over here. Okay. And this little one. That could go nearer the front, I think. So I'm being pretty random with the tears. I'm just trying to make sure that we don't have too many straight edges because I really want all of these things to just blend seamlessly together. Ooh, that black floral is cool. And since these are probably gonna be in the background, I'm not too, too worried about having all of the floral images perfectly visible. All right, maybe I'll just there we go, I like that. Okay, and ooh, these are good. So I'm just gonna keep tearing these and soon we will have a collageable layer. Okay, let's see if I tuck that in. Yeah, I think something like that will work. Good. Okay, next I think we want maybe some of these purple flowers. Definitely too cheerful, but I think we can just make some jaggedy bits and that is going to work out quite nicely. Yeah, I wanna get rid of the end of that since it's technically a bouquet. There we go, much better. That could go here. 
And yeah, I want more of these red roses. that, then I will have a nice divide in my page. Good. There. Okay. I like that quite a bit. Let's go ahead and put this on fast forward as I glue these elements in place. Okay, now that we have our first collage layer dried, we're going to be muting some of these overly bright colors with a bit of distress paint. The distress paints that we're going to be using today include peeled paint, rustic wilderness, and ground espresso. So I'm just going to take a paintbrush and I've diluted some paint off to the side and we're going to try to do a bit of a wash. I want to get a very vintagey type look going. So. I'm just taking a little bit of the ground espresso that I've diluted and we're just going to start washing these flowers a bit and then I'll go in with the greens and start filling in a little bit of vegetation and seeing what we can do. Okay, it's not bad but I think I need to lighten that just a little bit. Ground espresso is a really nice deep color so we're definitely going to grunge these flowers up pretty fast. Okay, and we'll just pull some of the extra paint down because I do kind of want to get a bit of a dirt path going at the bottom of this. Okay, not bad. We'll just wipe off a little bit of the extra paint that we don't need. Pretty good. I think I'm happy with that. Okay, so I'm just going to give this a quick dry with the heat tool and then we'll go in with another layer of okay, paint. Now I'm just going to go in dark with the ground espresso and make a bit of a pathway here. Just going to paint that on and then we'll move on to some green. Okay, that should be good. So I'm going to go in with some of the rustic wilderness next and then I'm going to blend that out with some of the peeled paint. So I'm just kind of trying to kind of blend this into the background, create a little bit of a hedge going on back here and trying to hide some of those jaggedy edges now that were helping us collage earlier. So I'm just going to take a brush and we're just tapping it on, just trying to blend everything into a seamless picture. There we go. It's not bad. Just continuing to add bits of that green in, slowly blending it into the rest of the picture. I'll probably have to go over with a diluted layer and try to camouflage those flowers in just a little bit more. But for the moment, I think we're going to grab some of that peeled paint and start blending that in. There we go. Now I'm getting a nice little grass look in the front. I like that. I've got kind of an old battered brush, so the bristles are going every which way, which is perfect for getting some nice spiky grass. Okay, pretty happy with that. Okay, let's see. I think I want a little bit more in the corner over here. That is good. Okay, so now I want to go in and... I think we're going to use some of the peeled paint and we're just going to dilute that off to the side and then do a wash. There we go. Pretty good. Now that is blended more into the background. We still have the flowers there, but they're not all that uh, bright anymore. I just wanted them to blend into the background. That is good. Okay. So again, we're just going to dry this layer and then we will come back and add some of our bolder flowers. Oh, I just need to do a little touch up over here. Just a little bit more grass. 
Mm. Peel of paint. It is definitely a good color. All right, let's get that. Hey, we've got that paint layer dry. Now let's go in and start placing our other florals. We're going to do a rough setup and then we will go back in and do a final layout with these. But I like to see what I'm doing first, just kind of get an idea of where I'm laying things down and how it's going to look. Okay. Oh, I love these black roses. They are really, really cool. Okay, let's see what else have we got. Hmm. Yeah, I kind of like having those other flowers just kind of peeking through slightly. They're not really the focus of attention, but they're definitely still there. Ooh, like that greenery. I'll have to mute that colorful white out, but not a big deal. Let's see. Got any more of those black flowers? Yes, I do have a few. Good. Because these are gorgeous. Okay, put that there. Let's see. I can tuck another one of these over here. There. Do I have any more leafy greens? No, nope, that's okay. Let's see. What do we have? Hmm. I need like another little small floral element near the top. Let's see what I've got. Oh, this is a really big piece. Maybe if we put down that large piece, then I can rearrange some of the smaller pieces. Oh, because that gives us a lot of the greens that I wanted. Okay, then maybe I can tuck this like that. It's not bad. And hmm, if I move that over here, then I put on the little black roses down there. It's not bad at all. And we'll tuck this piece somewhere there. Okay, I think I'm pretty happy with this. Okay, so we are going to get our collage medium and then we're going to put this on fast forward as we finalize this arrangement. Okay, we've got our floral layers down. So now it's time to add some finishing touches to this. Now what poison garden wouldn't be complete without some mushrooms? So I've got a beautiful variety of mushrooms that we can add to this scene. I love these. These are very, very, very cool. So we're just gonna add these in. Let's see. Right here should be good and I want another one. Let's see, what have I got? Oh. That should be very good. And then one little set right there. So again with the mushrooms, we've got that hazy silhouette thing going on with them. So we'll need to do a layer of collage medium to get them adhesed to the page, and then I'll need to go in with a wash of paint again to tone down those edges. Because right now those mushrooms are sticking out and not in a good way. So let's just get that collage medium on there. We'll give this a quick dry, and then we'll go in with some more paint. For our main focal point, we're going to be bringing in a paper doll. But first I want to do a quick little transformation and add a little bit of distress paint to her dress. So I'm just going in with some of the Rustic Wilderness and we're just going to add a quick layer of paint on here just to have a little bit more color. I think I'll try to wipe off that a little bit of white. Let's see if I can. Just taking the corner of this towel and yes, that comes right off. Good. All right. 
and a little bit more paint over here. Good. And now we have a easily altered paper doll, just a touch of distressed paint, and she has a whole new dress color. Good. So we're going to take her and we're going to add some collage medium and glue her right into the journal. But before we do that, I wanted to add a pair of transparent wings. These are cool and adds a little touch of fun and magic to our scene. Okay, good. And now more collage medium. A little bit more. Trying not to get too much on the wings because I want those to remain nice and clear. We'll place her right here. Okay, I'm just going to hold that for a moment. And the last couple of things that I want to do are to add a few garden signs. And what better signs to add than beware and poison. I also cut out a couple of little pieces of brown paper so that I can make little stakes for the signs to be placed in our scene. Okay, I think that's good. And back in for more collage medium. Just gonna smear that on the back. Get our steak, place that right here. That is definitely fun, I like that. And poison, I think we're gonna put that right over here and I think I can even hide it behind a mushroom. Yep, right there. That is fun. A little bit more collage medium. Okay. Good. I like it. And one more sign. We've got beware. Just take that. More collage medium. Spread that around. Get our little brown piece of paper. And let's see. I think I want to tuck that right here behind this black flower. Perfect. Right there. And a little bit more collage medium to glue that down. And we're going to need a tiny dash of walnut stain paint to grunge that up a little bit. Okay, coming back with our paintbrush. Getting a little bit of that diluted solution I have. There we go. Ooh, I like that. Wipe off a little bit of extra. That is good. And we'll give a quick wash over that poison sign. There we go. Okay, and our focal point is in place. Now, before we can truly call this done, we need to add a touch of Distress Grit Paste Glow for an eerie look. So, we're just gonna open the jar and I'm going to grab a palette knife and we're going to be adding this around the edges of our journal. So I'm thinking around the edges and I kind of want to smudge just a little bit on the mushrooms and we'll see how that goes. Okay, so we're just going to take that and we're just going to dab along the edges. I want that cool ghostly glow. Oh, that's going to look so cool. Okay, a little bit more. Just kind of dabbing that on. And smushing it a bit. Okay. And let's see. We'll work around this edge. Mm. Now, Grit Paste Glow is really interesting. It is probably one of the most watery mediums out of all of the distress mediums in the Ranger line. It is got this really weird viscosity. It's kind of like very melty butter. It's not as thick as honey. It's definitely not as thick as maple syrup. It's not as liquidy as oil, but it's it goes on really, really easily. And it does take a little bit of a time to dry just because of how, well, I guess watery would be the best word for it. But that is going to be okay. We're just going to dab this on and 
let it dry. For drying time, I'm probably going to give this at least 40 minutes. It is fairly humid today here in lower Quebec, so I usually try to take in the weather as consideration when listing my drying times. Okay, there, I like that. And we just have this side left to do. Just kind of scrapey, scrapey, all of that grip paste onto the edge. That's good. A little bit more. So just working away around this corner. Mm. Now for the glow on this. If you put this in direct light, you don't need any special light like UV light or black light. It will charge and then it will glow for a couple of minutes. But after it stops glowing, then you'll just need to put more light on this before it glows again. But the glow is pretty cool and it is pretty bright. We'll try to get a couple of shots with this glowing. Okay, almost done. Just a little bit more on this page. And we'll see how that looks. Okay, just like that. There we go. Okay. Mm, I think I'm just going to leave it with the border. I think there's going to be plenty of glow. And this is going to dry into kind of a muted color along the edges. So I don't think we need any more glow paste. All right, let's go ahead and let this dry and we're going to be back in a bit and see the final effects of this Poison Garden journal spread. Thank you so much for joining me here today at the Crafty Corner for some mixed media journal art fun. Today we've been creating to the theme of Poison Garden. I had so much fun with this ideology Halloween spread. And until next time, happy crafting!